This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building a beautiful online presence and running your business. Morning, hope you're doing well. What I'm gonna to do today is kick off a series of videos all about riding gravel. It's something I've wanted to do for ages and just haven't got around to, but finally I'm doing it. So I am going to look into all aspects of gravel riding. I'm going to give you tips and uh, share all the stuff that I've learned in the time that I've been riding and racing gravel. I'm gonna go through equipment, bike setup, but today I'm gonna to start with the basics. So we'll be covering uh, the main difference between road bikes, gravel bikes, and cross bikes. We're gonna look into tires, tire choice, tire pressure. We're gonna have a look into gear, not covering all the clothes and stuff you might want, but we're gonna look into the, your choice of pedals and cleats and shoes. What else are we gonna do? Ah! <laughs> Gearing, we're gonna talk about gearing. So let's begin. <coughs> One of the main differences between a road bike and a gravel bike is geometry. So a gravel bike would tend to have a um, longer wheelbase and potentially a longer back end. It might have um, a slacker head tube, it might have higher stack height. You might also find that your gravel bike is heavier than your road bike because they are built to withstand more, you know, they're going to take more of a beating. So not all the time but frequently you'll find your gravel bike is a bit sturdier and therefore heavier. The other main difference is in tyre clearance. You would tend to be able to fit a much wider tyre in a gravel bike and that wider tyre is going to give you more comfort when you're riding off-road. It's not uncommon nowadays to see gravel bikes that can fit 50c tyres that are really, really wide. I'll just briefly touch on why a gravel bike is not the same as a cyclocross bike. It's usually because of the tyre clearance. A cyclocross bike is not designed to take such enormous tyres because if you're racing cyclocross under UCI rules, you can only fit up to a certain width of tyre. I can't remember what that width is, but it's not as wide as that. So a cross bike won't be able to fit as many tires. It won't have as many mounts and stuff like that for putting bottle cages and carrying gear that you might need on a gravel bike because it's only designed for a short race. It's also going to be less comfortable because again, designed for a short race. It's going to have a much higher bottom bracket. So it'll be much more uh, nippy to handle but less stable than the gravel bike. Basically a cross bike is not a gravel bike. Now that we've covered that, let's talk about tire size. So the tire that you choose is really going to depend on, well, what you can fit in your bike, but also what kind of riding that you're doing. If you're planning to do very sort of light, dusty trails, nothing that gnarly, you could get off with something a little bit narrower. If you're gonna be riding really rocky, horrible, nasty bridleways like the ones around where I am, you're gonna want something a bit fatter because not only does it cushion you, it also means that you're not gonna like bash your rim by, you know, squishing quite a small tire. So um, if I was gonna suggest what tire size someone gets to start out with, around 40C might be quite a good start. Um, that's gonna be fairly comfortable on most of the stuff that uh, a rider might encounter in the UK. You might wanna go wider if you want to ride more gnarly terrain, then you want something with a bit more grip, a bit more cushioning. And of course, you could go narrow, narrower if you're really not gonna be riding anything that extreme at all. You know, you're talking sort of canal towpaths, that, that sort of thing. It's worth mentioning here that gravel bikes do come with two different wheel sizes. 650B is a smaller wheel and allows you to put in a bigger tire because you've got more clearance generally. And 700 is the normal size wheel that you would get on your road bike. Both have their advantages. I like 700s because I think they're fast rolling. 650s do have their place. You can fit in a super wide tire. They can be very, very comfortable and they're good for technical bits. However, if your bike isn't designed to take 650s, you could find that it lowers the bottom bracket, lowers the overall height of your bike because obviously the wheel is smaller, so the hub is lower, so your bottom bracket is lower. Before we continue, just wanted to say a huge thanks to Squarespace for supporting the channel. Squarespace is a one-stop shop with all the tools you need for publishing and running your website. You can purchase your domain, add class or appointment scheduling, host galleries, sell your products, analyze traffic, everything. So head to Squarespace for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to www.squarespace.com forward slash Juliet Elliott for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. The link is down there in the description. 
Okay, let's talk tyre choice. Now, I will try and keep this simple by saying that there are three main types of tyre. So you have Road Plus style tyres. That is basically a much bigger, much wider road tyre. They can be semi-slick or just with a bit of tread. And those are good if you're not doing anything too kind of gnarly and you're mainly gonna be sticking to light gravel and nothing too extreme. They can be good for adding a bit more versatility to your road bike, making it more comfortable. And they're also fast rolling. So if you were doing something where it's not too technical and you just wanted to like pound out the miles on your gravel bike, a Road Plus tire can be a good choice. The second kind of tire like this has a cluster of uh, knobbles in the middle that are raised. And this forms a kind of ridge that makes these tires fast rolling on any hard packed and road sections but means you've still got grip from the tread around the rest of the tire. Um, these ones will suit most of the stuff that you'll encounter in the UK, unless you're gonna go more into mountain bike territory, um, which I kind of do. The third kind of tire is um, a much bigger, much beefier tire with a lot more tread, something that's closer to a cross country mountain bike tire. You would tend to choose something like this if you were doing really quite technical or slippery terrain, something that's very rocky, uh, something where you need a lot of grip and cushioning. So I've got these 45C Rattlers on my gravel bike because I knew that during Bare Bones 200, I'd encounter a lot of stuff like that. But you can get much bigger and chunkier tires than this. It's just a case of finding something that suits the sort of riding that you're gonna do. The next thing to talk about is gearing and your group set. Most gravel bikes tend to be one bike, which means you've got one chainring at the front and then a wide range cassette at the back. There are several reasons why this is the norm for gravel bikes. One of the main ones is that it is lighter and easier to maintain. Just your single chainring at the front. You don't need a front derailleur. It's just simple, clean, easy. The other reason is you tend not to notice um, larger jumps between gears on a gravel bike. With a road bike, you need much more incremental shifting in order to ride with um, great finesse, you know, and really um, optimize your cadence. With a gravel bike, that is not quite as important. You just wanna be able to get up something really, really steep. So you'll often find a really, really, really big sprocket on the cassette of a gravel bike. That's to get you up all the steep bits. And you will also tend to find a clutch on the rear mech. That helps stop the chain jumping off because obviously with that huge cassette at the back, you could get a lot of chain slap. You will also tend to find that gravel bikes use a narrow wide chain because that helps it stay on and not jump off. The last thing I wanted to do is talk a teeny bit about equipment. I'm not gonna go too far into this, but I can do another video about gravel clothing and all that sort of thing if you want. Let me know if you're keen on that sort of thing. But I do wanna to touch on pedals and shoes in this video. So basically, you've got two main types of cycling shoes. You've got road shoes, and then you've got mountain bike shoes or gravel shoes. I mean, I would say they're mountain bike shoes. There are two main differences. With a road shoe, you tend to have a really, really flat sole just with a heel bolted on for walking about, although the plan is you don't walk about in them very much. And gravel bike or mountain bike shoe tends to have a decent bit of tread for you to walk about because when you're gravel riding, you sometimes have to get off and push your bike over tricky sections. The other difference is in the choice of pedals and cleats. So there are a load of different cleats that you can use for road cycling, but we're not talking about that. If you're using a mountain bike shoe on your gravel bike, you would tend to use mountain bike pedals, something like Shimano system or Time Attack. These tend to be double-sided, so they're really easy for you to get your foot in and out uh, when you have to take it out on tricky bits or that kind of thing. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it at that. I just wanted to give you the basics on gravel riding. And if you've got any further questions about all that sort of stuff, then please do leave me those in the comments. Moving on from this video, I'm gonna go out and show you some gravel cycling tips. I will take this out and do some demos and stuff like that. Did you know I am actually a qualified coach? Um, so that should be fun. And yeah, I've got a whole bunch of other stuff planned for this gravel series. So let let me know if there's anything you want to see and I'll try and incorporate it. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!